Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a wireframe transition shader. I used a similar shader in an edit I just posted on my Instagram. I'll have the link down below. All right, so without further ado, we'll get straight into the editing. Uh, in Blender, I'm gonna add a monkey, the Suzanne monkey. Then from there, add a subdivision surface and put it to a level of two, shade it smooth. And from there, we could go straight into shading. And from there, I'm just gonna build a base material that's visually appealing. So add a noise texture, add a color ramp. And this first value, I'm gonna make red. And then the other side, I'm going to make yellow towards maybe a little bit more orange. And what I wanna do is I wanna make like a metallic red shader and then have kind of like gold bits stuck in between there. So I'm gonna continue building this. I'm gonna make, add a math node, then add a greater than right here. Plug in the factor into the value. And from there, if you can see, we have already a mask going. So from there, I'm just gonna plug in the value into the factor and color into base color. And as you can see, we have just the base of the shader right here. So I'm gonna crank the metallic up and bring the roughness down. And from there, I'm gonna duplicate this noise shader and then crank it up a little bit more. Then add a bump node here, factor into height and then bump into normal. But what we wanna do is we wanna use this noise texture that we created right here and is greater than as a mask because we don't want the bump everywhere. We just want it in a specific spot. So I'm gonna take this greater than value right here and plug it into the strength. Now from there, I'm just gonna play around a little bit more, increase the scale of this noise, lower the distance, bring up the detail, and we're almost there. I'm just gonna increase the distance, play around with that. And then just reduce this, add some more detail, increase the roughness. So this is just a simple base shader that I made for demonstration purposes to transition into the wireframe shader. Uh, so I'm gonna name this one red plus gold bits. And from there, then we want to add our wireframe shader. So I'm gonna, just gonna disconnect this one from now and then we can start building the wireframe shader. In fact, there is a wireframe node. And as you can see, we already have the wireframe there. Uh, I'm actually gonna bring the subdivision down one more because it looks better like this when you don't have that busy of a wireframe. And with this wireframe, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mix shader and we're gonna make the wireframe the factor. So wherever the wireframe is gonna be white, we want it to glow. And wherever it isn't the wireframe, we want it to just be a simple black shader. So, so from there, we add a diffuse to the top plug. Make sure it's black. And then to the bottom one, we add an emission shader. And this emission shader, once we plug it in, you can see that we have the wireframe effect. I'm just gonna quickly go into Eevee first. And from there, we can bring the emission strength up so we have a little bit more of a glow effect. So here's the wireframe shader. And here is our other shader. We just quickly add a HDRI so we see the shading better. So we have our wireframe shader and we have our other shader. How do we combine these two? And the answer once again is a mix shader. So from here, I'm gonna add another mix shader and plug this principle on top. And then this mix shader on the bottom, we're gonna plug into the bottom right here. And now this factor right here is how we're gonna be driving the transition. So in order to create the transition, we're gonna need a gradient. So the way to do that is I'm going to add a texture coordinate, and then I'm gonna add also a mapping node. And we are going to use the object coordinates and plug that into vector. And in order for this object coordinate to work, 
we need to reference a particular object and I'm going to use an empty for that. So I'm just going to select this empty right here. And if we preview this node, we can see right here that we have the empty influencing some sort of gradient, but we only want one coordinate of the gradient. So what I'm gonna do is add a separate X, Y, Z, and I'm pretty sure it is the X coordinate. As you can see, now we have a nice little gradient forming right here. I'm just gonna bring this gradient up to the middle, which is gonna be 0.5. And from there, we can add a color ramp to smoothen out the gradient a little bit change it to ease and then i also want the gradient to be a little bit longer so i'm going to decrease the scale and just punch it in a little bit just like that and now from there we have our completed mask as you can see once we move the empty we are moving the gradient mask and even if you rotate it we have the gradient rotating on any axis you rotate the empty. Now to finish things up, all you gotta do is plug in this color ramp color into the factor of the mix shader and then plug in the shader into the shader. And once we wait for the shader to compile, you can see we are done. There isn't that much to the shader, but it might be a little bit daunting to understand the terminology, especially with the vector coordinates and mix shaders when I was new to Blender, I was struggling with that. But now I'm getting a little bit more hang of it, so I'm able to make these tutorials for you guys. Now one more bonus tip you can do to add a little bit of variation to this transition, like I did in my previous tutorials, is you can add a mix RGB between the mapping and the separate XYZ. So we're modifying the vector right now, so I'm just gonna slap that in between there a little bit more space and change this mix value to linear light and on top of that we add in a noise texture we add in a noise texture and we plug in the color into color and as you can see from here we have this factor value on the linear light node that we can use to change the amount of distortion from the transition point so i just want to scale this up a little bit more we get a little bit more of like a cloudy appearance, bring it down a little bit, increase the detail. And now as you can see, the transition is done. Just one more finishing touch. I want to modify this noise a little bit more. Maybe modify the color ramp. You could always play with any of the settings you make to get a different looking effect or style. And after making some minor tweaks to some settings, we are done. As you can see, we can move this empty around to transition between the two shaders, as well as rotating it to manipulate it and put it in any position or direction that we would like. Just one thing I wanted to mention about the edit that I showed in the beginning of this video is that instead of using an actual shader for the transition, I started with transparent and then it transitioned into the wireframe. That way I overlaid real life footage and then it kind of looked like it was transforming into like a simulation wireframe. So instead of having an actual shader for the first bit, you can just add a transparent BSDF and instead of using the actual shader, you could use that. And to make it show an EV, you just got to change your blend mode to alpha hashed and as you can see, when we move this empty back and forth, we go from wireframe to completely invisible. So, so if you're doing VFX, you could use this particular modification of the shader. But if you're making a full CGI scene, you want to have an actual shader. So you want to just plug it in into the first top slot of the mix shader right there. I'm going to make a node group of this shader and have it available to download. The link will be in the description below. If you got something out from this video, consider subscribing as I'm going to have more Blender tutorials coming. And I did mention that I'm also doing videography tutorials and videos. I just haven't managed to do that yet, but I'm hoping to start doing some more videography stuff so you can start seeing kind of like how I shoot in the real world and stuff like that. So stay tuned if you want to watch some of that. That being said, hope you have a good one and I'll see you all in the next video.